Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Donson from tutvid.com. Welcome into this Adobe Illustrator tutorial, where today we're going to take a look at creating this really cool stacked 3D cube effect semi-transparent, it's borderline isometric illustration, you could argue. Uh, it's really cool. That's all I'm going to say. And it's kind of easy to do. You can just follow right along and you'll have your own little copy of this effect in no time flat. Now, if you do enjoy this tutorial, make sure, of course, you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you never miss any graphic design, Photoshop, Illustrated, Illustrator, or other related tutorials uh, now or in the past. There's a whole bunch of other Illustrator tutorials on the channel that you can check out as well. Uh, so with that out of the way, well, guys, let's jump into Illustrator right now. Ah, uh, yes. Here we are in Adobe Illustrator, and I'm going to create a new document to kick things off, 2560 by 1440, one of my favorite resolutions at the moment. I'm also working here in CMYK and at 300 PPI. That doesn't really matter for this. In fact, you probably should be working in RGB, but I'm just going to stick with CMYK because it's Illustrator, and CMYK is the bomb. Now what I'm going to do is grab my rectangle tool, and I'm going to click a single time, and I'm going to create a rectangle sized 175 by 175. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to go Object, Transform, and choose to rotate this 45 degrees. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to give me a diamond shape, right? Simple enough. Then we're going to go Object, and I'm going to choose to scale this. Here, I'm going to come down and choose Non-Uniform Scaling, and I'm going to set the horizontal scale to 70%. I can even preview this, and you're going to see it's just going to squish my diamond a little bit. In fact, now that I'm looking at it, I actually don't want horizontal. I'm confusing things. I want 70% on the vertical. I'm going to hit OK. And as I just saw a second ago, Illustrator has automatically expanded the shape. If it didn't for you, though, you can go Object and just to choose to expand to get this down to this shape that you see right here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this shape by going Edit, Copy. And then I'm going to choose Edit, Paste, and Back. And I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to nudge downward five times. This essentially is going to move it 50 pixels downward. So Shift and down arrow key, one, two, three, four, five, just like that. All right, simple enough. Now I'm going to select these. I'll drag them. I don't know. I'll just drag them down a little bit closer to the center of my document. It doesn't need to be precise. And then I'm going to go View. I'm going to choose Guides, and I'm going to choose to Make Guides. Now you can see our shapes have been converted to these just blue lines that aren't moving and they're just hanging out there. This is actually perfect. We also want to go view and make sure our smart guides are turned on. That's going to make this next step an absolute breeze. We're going to grab the pen tool. In fact, we're going to get rid of the stroke. So I'm going to select the stroke in my tool uh, bar here. I'm going to choose none to get rid of that. We can draw with white. Honestly, we can draw with any color. Let's make it like a light green just so it's easy to see. And I'm going to create the three sides to my shape. So I'm going to click once here. I'm going to click once here. And you can see as I get to an anchor point, see how it says, yep, you're hovering exactly over that anchor point. It's exactly what I want. And I'm just going to create a perfect shape. Then I'm going to hold down Shift so I don't accidentally work with that anchor point. And I'm going to hover over the anchor point, drop a new point for a new shape. And I'm going to follow the anchor points once again. You only need to hold down Shift for that very first, the first time you click on the anchor point. Hold down Shift again, click on that anchor point. Now I've let go of Shift. Just come through, and there we go. We now have three shapes. And if I select these front shapes, I could do something like make them just slightly different shades of green, just so we can really see what's going on here. You can see we have created this nice little uh, 3D, faux 3D looking shape. So let's come up here to view. Let's uh, hide our guides just to get them out of the way for the moment. I'm going to select all three of these shapes, and I'm going to group them by hitting Command or Control G. So if I open up my Layers panel here, you can see I've got a group. I do have my two guides. We can just ignore them for the set, for the time being. I'm going to select this group, and we're going to copy and paste this uh, three times. So we're going to go Command or Control C, and then Command or Control F to paste in front, Command or Control F to paste in front again, and Command or Control F to paste in front again. I'm going to select the top one. I'm going to name it 1. I'm going to double click on the second one and name it 2, third one 3, and fourth one 4, just like that. Now what I'm going to do is select the first group as I have it here by just selecting the circle there in the Layers panel. And I'm going to nudge upward 50 pixels. So that's holding down Shift and typing the up arrow key 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, just like that. Now I'll select the third group right there, and I'm going to nudge this downward 100 pixels. Now, with three selected here, I could hold down Shift and nudge downward 10 times, or I could just go Object, Transform, Move, and just choose here along the vertical. Let's move it down 100 pixels. I'll hit OK. And then for box number four, we actually want to move this down 200. So we'll go Object, Transform, Move, and we'll choose to nudge this sucker down at 200 pixels. So you can see how that is going to make things a little bit easier for us. So already we're starting to build out this kind of interesting looking shape here. It doesn't look too amazing because we haven't uh, added shading or gradients, so let's add some gradients to make this start to look like magic. 
let's begin with object number two. So I'm going to select object number two here, and I'm actually going to ungroup it. So I'm going to go object and choose ungroup right off the bat, just to give me access to my three paths right away. Just so I don't mess up objects one, three, or four, I'm going to lock them in the layers panel by hitting my lock icon, and we're going to focus here entirely on object number two. In fact, I should probably shut off object number one, just so we can really see what we're doing here with object number two. And here's where, if I had been thinking far enough ahead, I would have created an RGB document instead of CMYK because we're going to begin working with some RGB colors. Up here in the color panel, I'm going to hit the little flyout menu. I'm going to choose RGB. And I want to punch in a hexadecimal code here. So I've selected the front right side shape, by the way. I'm going to fill this with the color 765BA7. So you can see kind of this purpley color. Then we're going to select the front left shape. Once more, we're working with RGB here up in the color panel. I'm going to fill this with, let's go 6F for uh, like D9F. So you can see it's another sort of purpley blue color, just a slight bit darker. We want this to be very subtle. Then we're going to select the top shape, and once more, we're going to add a color here. I'm going to go with something like 7C66AD. Uh, so it's again another sort of purplish blue. Purple and blues are very hard for me to see because I got a little, you know, that thing they call color blindness. Um, but I believe this is more purple than blue based on the hexadecimal code that I punched in. So this one's darker, this one's a little bit lighter, and this one is a little bit lighter than both of those. So we've we've shaded and colored our first 3D cube. Let's select these three bad boys. We'll group them up again by going Object Group. Now, sadly, we're going to have to rename our group, but it only takes a second, so let's rename it too, and we're going to lock that guy up. Here's where things get interesting. We're going to turn on number one. We're going to add some gradients here to number one. Uh, so I'm going to select number one here, and we're going to ungroup it. We'll go Object, Ungroup. And I'm going to begin with the top shape here. We're going to go to our gradient panel. I'm just going to click on the black to white gradient. It's going to apply it straight up. That's fine. And we want this gradient to go white on the left, and we're going to select the black color stop. I'm going to go back. I'm going to choose HSB here, and I'm going to punch in the color, uh, the hue we want to be about 235, 236. That's kind of going to be in the blues range. We're going to go for like 50 in the saturation department and about 65 in the brightness department. So you can see it's, it's kind of a darker blue than you would expect. That's fine. And what we want to do here is change the angle to 90 degrees. Therefore, putting the darker bluish purple color on the top and the white down here in the front. Now what we can do is select one of the front faces. We want this same exact gradient. So grab the eyedropper tool and just sample it from the top. And then select the other side, grab the eyedropper tool, sample it from the top as well. Now we need to change the angle of the gradient on these front objects. So for the right side, I'm going to try changing it to like 125 degrees. It's, eh, it's kind of actually about perfect. And then for the one on the left, let's go with like, if that's 125, this should be about 55, right? Yeah, there we go. So 55 degrees on that side. Now what we'll do is reduce the opacity of the sides up here in the properties panel. We're going to reduce the opacity of them to 35%. Uh, percent. And the top we will select, and re oh, no, nope, I want to select the side. The top we're actually going to reduce a little bit more. I'm going to select the side here. We're going to do 35%. The top we're going to reduce to 20%. We're really going to go a little extreme with the top because we want this to look like a glass cube sitting on top of our purple cube. And that looks, that looks relatively convincing, I think. We can select these three shapes, go object group, and we'll rename this group number one. And there we go. One and two are done. All right, so now we'll select grouping three. I'm going to unlock that. And we will go ahead and color the top here. We're going to go to RGB mode. And notice I can't do that. Why? Well, because I didn't ungroup this yet. And technically, it has three shapes selected. So we're going to go object ungroup. Then we'll just select the top. We're going to go to RGB mode so we can punch in a hex code. And these are this is going to be like a series of very light grays with just like a kiss of bluish purplishness to it. We'll go like FAF. Um, 2F8, let's say. Very, very light. You can see how it just has ah, just like a kiss of blue added to it. Now for the front right side, we're going to go, let's go F3. Uh, we'll go double E. It's very bright in the green channel and then pretty bright in the blue channel as well. So F3, double E, F5. You can see there that is very, hardly a distinction between the top and the side. And then over here on the left, we're going to go with EDE uh, 6F2. Let's go with that. Look at that. Yeah, just a little darker on that front side, just like we have up here with the purplish blue cube a little darker on that front side there i like the way that looks i can select these three sides and go object group once more i can rename this three and i'm going to unlock group number four and what we'll do here with group four is we could well yeah we'll just we'll just color it this way let's go object ungroup we're going to color it the same exact as everything above it so select the top side hit the letter i to select the eyedropper and sample from the top Go ahead and select the front right side, hit the letter I to grab the eyedropper and sample from that side, and then select the front left, 
hit I to use the eyedropper tool and select from the front left above it. And there you go. We've created those cubes, but we're still not done. I'm going to make sure I lock up group number three up here so we don't accidentally select it. Drag out a selection over those three sides for that bottom cube and go object group once more just so we're not messing with anything here. Rename the group number four and lock that up. All right, so we've got these stacks, but we can make them look a lot cooler just by adding some simple shadowing. And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to unlock layer number three or group number three here. And we're going to grab the pen tool. And I'm going to draw the shadow that's going to be cast onto cube number four. So again, because we have smart guides turned on, view smart guides, uh, we'll be able to align exactly with the bottom of this cube. So when I see anchor showing up, yep, I want to click to add my path there, come down to this anchor. We want to go over to this anchor and then just draw across a triangle just like that. Now, this triangle can be any color you want. You can see here in the layers panel, the path is way up at the top, uh, way up at the top above all of our cubes. Let's move it down below cube three, but above cube four. Remember, this is going to be the shadow that is cast onto cube number four. I can actually lock up the, the three group layer. So here in this path, well, instead of calling it path, we'll name it three shadow because it is the shadow cast from cube number three. We'll go effect, stylize, and choose a drop shadow. I'm going to move my dialog over here. We'll turn the preview on. And the first thing I'll do is I'll change the color. So I'm going to select color. I don't just want this to be a black. I want this to be some kind of blue color. So let's go with like 6, 0. Uh, let's try 4C and then like a 7F to really pump some blue. And you can see we get this like purpley bluish color. I'm going to hit OK. We're going to blur this by about 15 pixels. Um, and I'm going to get rid of all the X offset. That's moving the shadow side to side. I only want the shadow to be cast downward. That's the Y offset. So the Y offset can remain at 7. 7 actually works nicely for what we've got going on. Uh, the X offset at 0 is now perfect. I'm going to go with, let's just kick the blend mode back to normal. It's not going to make a huge difference. And then we'll set the opacity to like 30%. So very subtle. We're going to hit OK. If I deselect, you can see we have this nice looking shadow. So now to repeat this, we're going to unlock uh, box number two. Once again, we'll grab our pen tool. We'll just redraw that same exact shadow shape over here in the layers panel. We'll drag that path beneath uh, box number two. We can lock up box number two. Double click that layer. Let's name this layer to shadow. And this is easy at this point. We can just go effect and choose apply drop shadow. And it's going to apply the same exact drop shadow as we last used to this object as well. So just apply drop shadow. There it is. Voila. We can lock up our drop shadows. And just like that, guys, just like that, we've created this cool 3D stacked effect. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention I found this effect over on Behance. I don't know if I still remember the exact link to where this was uh, or the name of the creator, but I will try to find all that to include it uh, as some kind of credit for the artist who invented this little effect. Uh, so you can check out their work over on Behance as well. But a cool little 3D stacked box effect here in Adobe Illustrator. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty cool, isn't it? That's going to be it for this one. Uh, if you did end up creating this and following along with the tutorial, well, hit me up over on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at Tutvid. If you upload your artwork, tag me in it. Tag me at Tutvid. Actually, in the image, not just in the caption, because the caption just shows up in my notifications, and I miss a lot of that stuff, sadly. But if you tag me in the actual image, then I, it shows up in my tagged images feed, and I can always go and show you a little bit of love and see what you're doing uh, in terms of following some of these tutorials. I would love to see that. Um, so guys, for creating this effect in Adobe Illustrator, working with multiple layers and guides, custom guides that you yourself have created, and custom gradients, and just different colors, all kinds of different stuff. For this one, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.